KC9CUK, I've got another video for you here. So I, I want to just do a brief thing here. First of all, this week, uh, or for this video, I don't have a sponsor. Um, no one sponsored this video. Uh, I, you know, was given some of this equipment to give away, which we'll talk about at the end of the video. But overall, no, no one sponsored this. I didn't get paid to do this. I can say whatever I want. Number two, nobody sent me their club pin or a club hat or a business hat or anything that they wanted me to drop a small promotion here at the beginning of the video so if you have one of those things send me a pin send me a hat send me something from your business or your club you get the idea it has to be two-way re radio related to the two-way radio hobbies okay and i'll do a small promotion at the beginning of the video show off your hat and share your website it's really that simple I wanted to talk to you guys about one thing before we got started here, and I'm going to try to keep it short. There was a lot of backlash from the Cobra 29 video. I had a lot of subscribers leave the channel. I had a lot of people blocking the video on social media, all because it was CB related and it wasn't ham radio. Um, that is incredibly ignorant and silly. I am not an elitist ham that you know since i have my extra license i'm better than a guy with his tech license i'm not I'm, it's <laughs> it's what you choose to do in the hobby and that is the same for gmrs uh i'm wrmb 269 i am not as active as i am on ham radio uh, but i do occasionally get on there um i've used mirrors in the past i've used cb in the past i had a cb radio station when i was in junior high um but there seems to be this still this unspoken thing that if you are a CB guy, you can't talk about ham stuff. And if you're a ham guy, you can't talk about CB stuff. Uh, that's incredibly silly. I'm not one of those guys. And I'm not going to not make content because some fuddy-duddy hams get all upset because I did a video on CB. I think we all need to lighten up. It's all two-way radio gear. That's how I see it. This is my opinion. You don't have to agree with it. But I'm not going to stop making content because some guys, you know, write nasty uh, messages and stuff like that because I did a video on CB. If that makes you want to leave my channel and you don't find any value through my content, that's okay. I'm okay with that. So enough on that. Talked about it too long. Uh, on with the video. All right. So what are we looking at today? Da 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 da. Another CB radio. So this is Cobra's brand new 75 All Road. And Cobra did not sponsor this video. I did ask them to send me one to give away to a subscriber, which we will do. You can watch till the end of the video to find out how you can get a, one of your own. What I like about this and why I was interested, I reached out to them about this. This is their brand new Cobra 75 All Road. This is a completely wireless radio as far as the control unit itself, which is something I've wanted to see for a very long time. In modern cars, there is no room to mount a radio, whether it's a ham radio, a CB radio. Uh, most ham radios have a removable faceplate. I was kind of hoping to see a couple of the CB manufacturers do that. I haven't seen it yet. Um, but this is a step in the right direction. This is something I can put in my vehicle. And I'll explain real quick why. <clears throat> There's a lot of features we'll go over here, but you have your main your main uh, control center uh, which is you know the size of a microphone we'll see that here in a second that's your display your microphone everything all your buttons all your controls right there and that wirelessly connects to a box wherever you can hide this box in your car get power to it and your antenna and you're in business you plug this into either usb which is really handy i'll tell you why in a little bit i had a really neat idea for that or a cigarette lighter jack a 12 volt accessory jack and anywhere in your vehicle this automatically connects to this and you're ready to go. So you don't have to run coax lines, you don't have coax lines in the control cable, you don't have to have power up here um, as far as uh, you know running all the way to the battery. It's just super simple. You know, I want this for a road trip, so I plug it in my cigarette lighter, use it for the road trip when I'm done, I unplug it, put it in the glove box, and you can't even see it. It's really incognito and really clean, especially for modern cars. Let's go ahead and get it out of the box, and I'll show you what's inside. 
Okay, we're back. We've got everything out of the package. And let's do a quick rundown. Pretty standard stuff. We've got a manual, some card information, some information about third party, uh, not third party, uh, a Bluetooth push to talk button you can buy, which uh, we'll talk about here in a second. The main hand unit, which has everything in it, all the controls, your speaker, your display, your microphone, everything all in one. The remote uh, unit or black box, I like to call it, um, pretty standard, power, antenna, external speaker jack looks like. Little accessory package for your microphone holder, spare fuse, some mounting screws, power cable, and a 12 volt accessory <laughs> jack, as they call them nowadays. I call them a cigarette lighter. Uh, so you can go from either a USB to power this, or you can plug your USB into the accessory jack in your car. So if you have a car with a USB, you can do that. If you have a car with an accessory jack, you can do that. So it's pretty versatile. I also like the idea for USB because a lot of little portable power packs for charging your phone or um, jump starting your car have USB on them so you could actually sit out on a picnic table have your car parked uh, nearby you know maybe in a parking lot and you could sit on a picnic table and still talk on the radio we'll have to try that I think that's interesting so let's run down a couple things about this radio first of all it's wireless that's what makes it so exciting to me you put this in the trunk hook your antenna and power to it or anywhere in your car you can hide this. And then you have this that you can just throw in the glove box. When you want to use it, plug it in. It connects automatically to the box. Use your radio. When you're done, you unplug it. Put it back way in the glove box or in the center console. We're going to put this in my Subaru. So you can kind of see how that all works and why I'm excited about this. Because I can actually have a CB radio for road trips. Instead of having like an eight, a handheld CB radio. I do like listening to the traffic on channel 19 while going down the road. So, anyway, some quick things. It is wireless, it is Bluetooth, cigarette lighter jack, or the accessory jack. That's all you need for this. And it talks, it connects automatically to the box. So you can unplug it and leave it for a long time. Six months later, plug it back in, it'll automatically connect to the box. It works right out of the box. Very impressed with that. Also supports third party Bluetooth headsets like the Blue Parrot, which is really popular in the trucking industry. And it does support the one of the first things I looked up, it does support the accessory button on the side of the Blue Parrot. You can program that to be the push to talk. So you can link your Blue Parrot headset right to this thing and make the accessory button push to talk, and you're good to go. If you have a cheap Bluetooth headset like I do, and we're going to try to connect it to this, you can get the Cobra push to, Bluetooth push to talk button which looks like that. You can order that, it is sold separately. So it does support other third-party Bluetooth devices. So that's really great. It's IP66 waterproof, which is a great thing. It doesn't mean you can throw this in a bucket of water. It means when you're in your Jeep or you're in your car and you leave your windows down and it rains and it gets wet, it's gonna be fine. That's, what's, uh, that's what that's all about. An exciting thing that I wasn't expecting to see in this, this does have receive and transmit DSP. So obviously on the receive, it helps lower, helps uh, your signal to noise ratio so you can hear better. And on your transmit, it helps reduce road noise, background noise, so the person you're talking to gets improved audio. So I'm excited to see how that works. The mic has a really nice weight and feel to it, and I really like that. Um, in the past, there's been a lot of radios, whether it be a CB radio, ham radio, where the mic is this feather light and it doesn't have a good feel to it. I have big hands. It, it is on the bigger side, obviously, because it does everything, but I like it. And I like that we have the grooves molded into it, so it really wants to sit in your fingers. You know, I'm not even gripping it, and it's staying pretty good. And it's got a really nice big push to talk button. I like that a lot. So, yeah, overall, uh, so far, I really like it. Nice weight to it. Another thing it has is it has built in weather radio with weather alert, so you don't have to have a separate unit with weather, which I think is fantastic. Um, it does have an option for ex external speaker. I don't know if I mentioned that before. And one of the uh, really cool thing that is kind of on the technical side of things, the SWR meter built into this actually uses a directional couple uh, to pick up, coupler to pick up the forward and reflected power. 
And what that means to the people who don't know what any of that means, the old SWR meters, they worked, but whatever. This has a modern SWR meter to actually set up your SWR and check your antenna and stuff. So I think a lot of people will appreciate that. Um, that's about it. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Next part of the video, we're going to go ahead and install it in the car and give it some testing and see how it works out. So we'll be back in just a moment. All right, we're out in the Subaru. Test out this new Cobra 75 All-Road. I've got it here. I've got the main, what we call the black box unit. I've got that um, currently just temporarily plugged in the back there. Um, I'll show you a quick picture here. And, yep, so let's go ahead and shut the car off. Got to put the accessory on, and I'm just plugging it down here. It's hard to see. Sorry about the cruddy filming. It's kind of hard to do this in the car. So we've got a 12-volt accessory jack there and a USB. They do give you a little adapter for the accessory jack, but we're just going to use the USB for right now. So I'm going to plug that in. So we have power. Pull the unit up here. Hit the power button. All right. And there we go. Well, I think it's already connected. Hmm, I was expecting some type of... Let me go ahead and... I'm going to pause the video just for a second. I'm going to get this little this plastic piece off here. Oh, let's see if I can do it on camera because I know everybody's... I don't want to see that. Well, I don't have three hands, so let's see if I can just do this one handed. Oh, look at that. Oh, I'm going to put fingerprints on it. Don't say I don't have any skills. One handed reveal. Look at that. Oh, sorry, guys. Hard to mount the camera here and film. So we're on channel 18 there. Okay, it says up and down channel controls. I'm not hearing anything. I'm assuming it's connected though. Let's go ahead and pull a squelch. Oh, that's 9 to 19. I'm trying to see the radio and film at the same time, which is kind of hard. All right, so we got squelch there. Oh, yeah, we got static. It's connected. So that's pretty awesome. I did nothing. I literally just plugged the unit into a 12 volt source in the back temporarily. You'll see it in the picture there. Look at that. And it's already working. Fantastic. That's very cool. Very cool. Very, very cool. <laughs> Not a level 11 meter. Um, yeah, it's working. Fantastic. That's very cool. I thought I'd have to pair it or do something crazy. Let's go ahead and... Oh, it's got auto squelch. Even better. Even better. Hold that down. Squelch off. Okay, very cool. So you can do a manual squelch or auto squelch. Very cool. All right, so here we go. We're going to do some searching around here. It's working already, which is pretty cool. Let's check the SWR real quick. Just key the microphone. And see if I can get it to focus on it. Testing. Yep, low SWR. You see the SWR at the bottom there. Very cool. Excellent. All right, I'm going to search around a little bit, see if we can find some people. Just going to go ahead and give a couple calls on Channel 19. There was a couple guys really strong here. So see if one of these guys is still in there. I, I You know, there's a, um, just hard to find somebody. So let me try real quick. Uh, break 1-9 for a radio check. Is there someone monitoring? Give me a quick check on this radio. Hey, go ahead, Breaker. Yeah, how's this uh, radio sound? Are you 
sound loud and clear. Uh, really good, good sounding uh, radio you got there. Right. Uh, thank you. Appreciate that. There's a lot of traffic on frequency here, but yeah, this is the brand new Cobra 75 all mode. If my audio sounds a little weak or a little weird, I'm pretty far away from the microphone. I'm, I'm filming for a YouTube, a YouTube channel. You can look up the YouTube channel. It's KC9CUK. Uh, KC9CUK. Search for that on YouTube and you'll find the video here so you can hear yourself. And I'm just doing a quick review on this new Cobra 75 All Road. And like I said, uh, I'm probably a little weak in the, the mic audio, but you're, you're coming in very, very strong. So, yeah, I appreciate you coming back to the call. Yeah, no problem. Uh, uh, glad to help. Yeah, you, your um, your audio, your transmit audio sounds really good. Uh, it's not weak at all. It's um, uh, you you're um, like I said, you're loud and clear. You sound per perfectly good on this end. Uh, good good sound and radio. Uh, go ahead. Oh, hey, thanks. I I really appreciate it. You wouldn't happen to have FM on that radio, do you? Actually, I do. I, I uh, picked up a one of those new new AM FM uh, uh, radios from Cobra, and so I've been I've been playing with that. Uh, if you want to try FM, we can go over there. Uh, why don't we uh, go ahead and go down a couple channels? Uh, say uh, channel seventeen there, and we were not interfering with anybody here. And I'll go ahead and go down a couple channels and go to FM. Okay, yeah, sounds, sounds good. Uh, I will uh, meet you down there. A uh, couple channels down, two channels. Uh, we'll meet you there. Bye. Oh, awesome. This is great. 17 FM. Okay, we're down here on channel 17 FM. Did you make uh, make the trip? I sure did. Uh, um, oh, hey, you, sound, you sound really good. <laughs> I, I'm set on FM. That sounds uh, how cool. Does, how does this sound? Oh, it sounds fantastic. Uh, I love having FM. That's neat. Uh, I don't know if I've ever talked on 11 meter and FM, so this might be my first uh, first contact. Yeah, same, same here. Uh, I guess it's I guess it's still pretty new, and and uh, you know, there's more. More as more radios get out there, I would hope uh, to hear more FM uh, traffic. But um, yeah, you sound really good. Um, it's pretty cool. Eleven meters, woohoo! Oh, I love having it in the car, and I never have room for a radio. I'm a ham radio operator, also, but I do like having uh, uh, CB here in the car for road trips and stuff like that. And I never have room for it with this new radio. This new uh, 75 All Road, it's completely wireless. So right now I'm talking on Bluetooth. The radio is actually Bluetooth to the main unit of the radio. So I, I just have this. It has like a. If you're familiar with like the old Cobra 75, I think it was called the WX or the Weather. It, uh, you know, it was a little tiny box that had uh, the microphone connected to it, and everything was in the microphone. Well, this is the same thing except for the microphone can be all on its own. It's completely wireless and Bluetooth, so pretty cool. Um, if you have a moment, I'm sorry to take up so much of your time, but I really do appreciate it. I was going to do a little experiment. I'm parked over here in a park not too far from the highway. I was going to walk out to the pavilion here and see if I can walk away from the car and still use the microphone plugged into like uh, one of those little portable power packs. No, it so, uh, sounds like a fun, uh, a fun experiment. Um, hey, the radio sounds really cool too. I haven't heard of that one. Uh, what, how, uh, how was it to uh, install the radio? Was it was it really hard to do, or or was it was it pretty uh, pretty easy? Uh, go ahead. Uh, it was com completely effortless. Um, I thought I was going to have to do some type of a pairing thing, like I do with my phone or my little. Bluetooth headset. This thing also supports third-party headsets, so I'm going to try that here later in the video. I won't do that now, but I'm going to try it later in the video. And yeah, it's pretty awesome. It was effortless. I literally 
have the little black box part of the unit in the trunk of my Subaru here, which is a 2023. It has absolutely no room in it. I just plugged it into 12 volts temporarily, hooked up an antenna to it, and then I walked up to the front of the car, plugged this, uh, the handheld unit into the USB jack in my car here, turned it on, it automatically connected, and I was getting stations right away. It was uh, completely effortless. I was really impressed. Wow, that's pretty cool. Uh, I've got one of the bigger uh, radios in here. It was kind of tough to uh, to get into my car, but it sounds like your your uh, setup is is a lot a lot more uh, um, a lot more ideal. Uh, well, okay. So if you if you want to do that test, I'll uh, stand by. Okay, sounds great. I'll stay right here. Thank you so much for giving me your time, and I will uh, I'll be back shortly. Hey, no worries. Uh, okay, so uh, give me a give me a shout. I'm gonna go ahead real I'll quick. I'm gonna hop. I'm gonna stop the video. I'm gonna stop the video here and hop out of the car. I'm gonna go over to the little pavilion, which you can see over there, and see how far I can get. I'm thinking about twenty, maybe twenty feet. If if this thing goes twenty feet, I'll be really impressed. So I'm gonna drive my car over to one of those parking spots there, and I'll be right back. All right, we're back. I'm just powering off a little. <laughs> little power pack here I use for like an emergency jumper or charge my cell phone and the car is way over there it's quite a far that's the white Subaru there a little glass mount antenna wondering what happened there go ahead yeah sorry my power bank is almost dead how's it sounding now I'm like probably 50 60 feet away from the vehicle powering it with a little power pack here uh yeah I don't know it, it sounds as, it sounds as as good as it always has uh, from the other uh, tests that we did. I, I can't tell the difference. Go ahead. <laughs> Fantastic. All right, I'm going to let you go. This thing keeps on cutting out. The power pack is almost dead. I can't believe it's working. It's pretty fantastic. This is really interesting to have a wireless uh, Bluetooth connection back to my car. I could sit out here and with my laptop, power the radio off my laptop, and get some work done. Yeah, that's cool. Oh, sounds like fun. Glad, glad I could help. Um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll listen out if you, uh, I'm going to head to uh, do some errands. If you want to do another uh, chat, uh, just give me a shout. Hey, I really appreciate your time. Uh, go ahead, check out the YouTube video. You can hear how your radio sounds. It sounds great. Uh, I'll let you go. Enjoy your afternoon. Like I said, I really appreciate your time. Sorry for the problems. Yeah, no worries. Uh, uh, cool. We'll, uh, we'll check out the uh, YouTube video. That sounds like a lot of fun. Already a good chat with you. Uh, we'll uh, we'll, we'll uh, sign out here. You can still hear me? Yeah, Roger that. You're, uh, you still sound the same, same as uh, all the other, uh, you know, conversations we've had. Uh, all the, all the other tests still sounds good. Um, same, same as, same as usual. Oh, that's insane. I'll let you go. I just said something to, because I was joking around. I'm, I'm way down the uh, walking path here. I'm about twice the distance I was before. So, hey, I appreciate it. Have a great day. Alrighty, glad, glad to help. Uh, uh, fun radio. Uh, we'll we'll see you. Okay, guys, we're back inside to go over the radio and its features. Um, by the way, had it on the service monitor, and to nobody's surprise, FM and AM four watts, really good. I will make a comment: the receiver on this radio is very impressive, at about one microvolt. Uh, really good signal noise ratio really hot receiver so it's got that going for it i thought i'd go over the features and kind of how it works give this more of a proper review so obviously that's your push to talk that's your on off that's your mic holder so <clears throat> this radio is set to defaults um like i said I, I literally plugged it in the car and turned it on and that was it uh, it works great um 
I'm going to put up a post about that little distance test, uh, that range test we did on the Bluetooth. That was that really kind of blew me away. Uh, I think Cobra officially states about 30 feet is its max. As you saw in the one video, the first where I was in the pavilion, and I'll put a picture up here, was roughly around, let's call it 70 feet, 60 feet. I just used uh, Google Earth there to get some quick measurements, so I don't know how accurate that is. And then that second link, I was actually talking to that gentleman. I actually, I wasn't even talking to that gentleman. I actually just kind of said something as a joke. I was way down the walking path. So it was like 100, maybe 150 feet. So I was kind of blown away. I can see a lot of uses for that. When I got it home, I did plug it into my laptop. And it, it works perfectly off my laptop USB. So you could be sitting in the park um, or at your campground. I could see if you're out four-wheeling with friends or something. And you're just hanging out at the camp because you got some work to do or something like that. You could have this plugged into your laptop and be talking through your mobile uh, to your buddies out in the campground or out in the sand dunes or wherever. So I can definitely see some uses for it. And when you're at home, I could see uses for the Bluetooth. You know, a lot of us have a main radio station at our house, and then maybe you wanted to take this out into the garage and plug it into a computer or plug it into a uh, another USB. Right now, I have it plugged in just to a, to a standard USB phone charger, and it's working rather well. So there you go. Pretty impressive. That's why I'm so excited about this radio. So let's go over some of the features. First, first button there. That turns on your noise banker, noise blank, and your automatic noise limiting for cutting down uh, static noise, engine noise, stuff like that. Okay, and if you hold down this button, you'll notice it goes from LO for local traffic or DX. So if you have it on local, that attenuates the signal. So super strong signals will get knocked down so not distorted. And normally you probably want to leave it on DX. A button right below it is your CB. So it puts it in CB mode or weather mode. You can go through the weather channels. I have no antenna plugged into it right now. It's plugged into a dummy load. <clears throat> and if you hold the button down, it locks everything. So you don't actually hit, accidentally hit a button and, you know, uh, excellently change channels or something like that so if you're you can lock the whole thing so hit that to unlock it this button of course up here at the top is AM and FM mode switches you back and forth you have volume so you hit the volume button then you can use the up and down arrows to control your volume level over here you have your enter key and your menu, men, a menu key so you hold it down to get into the menu and then your up and down arrows arrows to select the different menu items and obviously the enter button while you're in the menu uh, allows you to get in to do adjustments we'll get to that in a second here down at the bottom here we have squelch so if you hit it once and use the up down arrows you can adjust your squelch level okay if you hold it down it goes into auto squelch and auto squelch adjusts to the noise out there. And there's different levels to auto squelch. So as you saw that there, this will take it back to regular squelch. Hold it down again. Auto squelch and you can adjust what level of auto squelch you want. So that's that's pretty awesome. And it seems to work rather well. Uh, when I was in the mobile, I've used this for a couple days now. And it, it works rather well. Okay. Upper right hand corner you have escape. So that will get you out of... Uh, whatever menu item you are, and then memory. So this is interesting. If you hold it down, what you get is it selects a channel to be in memory. So let's do like channel 19. We'll put that in memory. Channel 23, we'll put in memory, okay? And now those are marked in memory. And that allows you to scan just those channels you have marked. So let's say you wanted to monitor channel 19. Let's say you're on a road trip and you and your buddies are talking on channel 23. And you're monitoring channel 19 for, you know, road traffic information. 
You can tag them both in memory and then you can just scan just those channels. Uh, and that you don't have to scan through all of them. So that's really cool. Last button here is your channel 9, your channel 19, and you hit it again. So it jumps back and forth between channel 9 and channel 19. And it also will step through your memories. Okay? So if you hold that button down, you get regular scan. It just scans through all 40 channels, stops on any channel with traffic. If you hold it down again, then it will scan just whatever channels you have marked as memory. So that's a really cool feature. It's almost like having a dual watch feature. Um, if you're familiar with that with other ham radios and some other uh, fancy CB radios have that feature where you can kind of monitor two channels at the same time. Uh, and you can hit the escape key to get out of that. So that's pretty cool. Let's go through the menus really quick. Hold down the enter menu key. That will put you into the memories. Not into the memories, into the menu. I'm sorry, into the menu. And then you can scroll through the menu. Bluetooth, enter. And that obviously you can pair your own Bluetooth. Uh, you can also choose what audio path you want the Bluetooth to be onto the, onto the handset. Uh, the handset, which is this, this, or the headset you're wearing that you've paired. Escape to get out. Escape to get out. Vox, this says does have Vox, so you can use voice activation to key the radio. Uh, if you are familiar with Vox, it allows you to just talk and it will transmit automatically without having to hit, push the talk button. This is something you want to do in a quiet environment. Um, <clears throat> it can be kind of a problematic feature, but it's also a neat feature. So if you're interested in that, you can dive into that more. Obviously, I've used Vox and ham radio before, um, but it's not for everybody. You can adjust what level uh, the Vox kicks in at, so obviously you have to talk louder for maybe the Vox to kick in, where you, you set it pretty high, that way you know background noise doesn't key your radio up. Um, let's get back in the menu here. It does time out rather quick. Uh, then you can set the delay for the Vox, uh, the timeout timer for the Vox. Uh, I mean, timeout, that's not for the Vox. So now we're to the next menu item. Timeout timer, obviously, it's exactly what it says it is. You go in there, and uh, right now it's set to five minutes. So uh, if you keep the radio keyed for five minutes straight, it'll stop transmitting. It times out. So that way, if you accidentally sit on the seat or this microphone gets stuffed in between the seats in the front seat of your Jeep or something, and accidentally is transmitting, it will time out eventually. And you can set that all the way to off up to 10 minutes there. So I'm pretty long-winded. So I'm going to hit 10 minutes. All right, weather alert. So obviously you can turn that off or on. And what that will do is, even if you're not listening to the weather channels, if there's a weather alert, the radio will alert you that there's a there's a, some bad weather in your area. So that's pretty awesome too. So this is a pretty feature-packed radio for what it is. Um, weather alert scan. Obviously it will scan. And weather auto scan, what that does when you go to the weather channels, um, they automatically scan to find the strongest one. Display megahertz, what that is, let's go ahead and escape. It determines that little, displays the frequency down there, whether that shows or doesn't show. So you can turn that on or off. I think it's great that they actually have that. Auto power, so when it senses um, you've started your vehicle, it will power itself on. Um, so you can turn that on or off. If you have it off, you have to manually turn the radio on every time you start your vehicle. Uh, personal preference, um, it's kind of a neat feature. Backlight, that actually, uh, uh, you know, actually adjusts just the backlight there, so how bright the screen is, your contrast, how dark the screen is. Uh, ketone, which I like off, so we'll turn that off. So now we don't have the annoying beep. Audio routing. You can go in here, you can tell it to go to the Bluetooth, you know, this speaker only. You can do the external speaker, which you can, you know, the black box in your trunk, you can plug an external speaker into it if you want it just to go out to that speaker and not out to Bluetooth, or if you want it to go on both, the Bluetooth and the external. So you can route the audio where you want, so that's pretty well thought out. Uh, this is your noise reduction, this is the DSP. This is the amount of level you are adding uh, for digital signal processing, uh, you want to add. So that's how you do that. 
and that's pretty self-explanatory so you have your transmit so this will cut down on the background noise now the more you add the more distorted you can sound i call it the wibbly wobblies uh kind of makes you sound like you're underwater if you add too much but this uh, i i've heard examples of this online already and it seems to work rather well um i don't know what it sounds like that much on transmit yet obviously i'm not the receiving station but on receive it's the same thing hit enter to adjust your receive noise reduction and this adds DSP to your receiver and cuts down on a lot of static noise. It, this does work rather well. Um, it works a lot better than I thought it was going to. So that's something you definitely want to try if you're in a really noisy environment and having a hard time hearing somebody. That will help. So that's something to check out. Then we have your information. That tells you the model number. Tells you the FCC ID, the IC number. Um, handset version, receiver version, I'm assuming that is firmware. So, pretty cool. So, I don't know if this has the latest and greatest, but I'm assuming it does. And that's a nice thing about firmware is, you know, if they can fix um, something uh, in the radio, you know. So, if there's a problem or, you know, something that, you know, the, the customers want, they can fix it in firmware. So, that's pretty awesome. Other than that, pretty straightforward, nice little radio, really impressed with it so far. It's definitely something I will use, which is saying something, because I haven't had a, well, I've never had a CB radio in my vehicle. Uh, I've had a 10 meter ham radio, but I don't think I've ever had a CB radio in my vehicle. So this might be the first one that would be great for road trips. Uh, like I said, just plug it in the center console when I'm using it. When I'm not using it, unplug it, put it in the glove box, and it's out of sight, out of mind. Okay, so let's talk about Bluetooth. So we played around with this a little bit. And let me back the camera up here a little bit. Sorry, the photography is not that good. I have a cheap Chinese knockoff little Bluetooth headset. And I was able to connect this to the Cobra. And it worked perfectly fine. So connecting your own does work and if you can connect this to it I'm sure you can connect almost anything to it and of course you can adjust the audio path where you want the audio to go um, for the push to talk um, you can do it a couple ways so way number one if your Bluetooth has an assignable button uh, you can possibly set that to push to talk it's gonna vary I know the Blue Parrot, like I said at the beginning of the video, the Blue Parrot that a lot of the truck drivers use um, is supported to assign a button to push to talk, which is really nice. If your headset doesn't have that or doesn't support it, or you're listening to earbuds or something, you can use the push to talk on the actual unit here to key the radio, or... Cobra sells this nice little wireless push to talk button that you can pair to the unit. And it's a nice little button, comes with a strap, so you want to strap it around like a steering wheel or something like that, or uh, maybe some type of a cell phone mount or something like that. Um, <clears throat> it is a very nice little compact push to talk button. I'm going to pop it out of the plastic here real quick that you just program and then you have a nice little push to talk button so you can use your Bluetooth uh, to communicate there. So lots of cool options. Um, one thing I did want to note is I've had people already ask me, what do you need Bluetooth for? What do you need a headset for, for a CB? Well, hands-free, A, it's, uh, it's obviously for uh, logical reasons, safer. Um, a lot of these have noise canceling for the ear part, earphone part, so you hear a lot better. And then one thing that I think it's so great for is there's been many a times, I usually take a little handheld CB for road trips, and I just set it in the cup holder and I have it on, and I just have, leave it on channel 19. Here's the problem. Sometimes there's some pretty foul mouth individuals that come over the radio, and when you have the family in the car, that's not something that's good. And I usually end up getting the look from the wife to turn that off or that's not appropriate for the kids to hear. So with this, 
you can have your Bluetooth earbuds in and just be monitoring for traffic alerts or something like that coming up and not have to worry about if someone comes over with something that's inappropriate that everybody in the car hears or when the family is sleeping. It's also nice uh, not to have the radio come blaring in all of a sudden. You forget, yeah, you know, you've been on the road for a long time and you forget you have the radio on and the volume turned up because you've got the squelch adjusted. So that's some great reasons to have it. I think it's really neat and it's really cool that they support other devices. You don't have to buy some proprietary, you know, device to use. So pretty awesome. Now, one last thing real quick. This is what I was using in my mobile. Um, so I have that. Uh, this was just uh, hooked up to the black box and allowed me to plug in uh, the black box. Uh, you know, not the not the control, not the main controller, but the actual black box. I was able to uh, just plug into a 12-volt accessory jack. A lot of cars, uh, especially SUVs and off-road vehicles, have an accessory, 12 volt accessory, cigarette lighter plug um, in the back of the vehicle now. So this is just an option if you're not going to permanently mount the uh, black box somewhere. Uh, like if you're going to put it underneath the seat and you want to hardwire it, you could. Or you could put it underneath the seat of the vehicle and use one of these. So you could just plug it in temporary and have the microphone plugged into the USB. There's, it, It's very versatile. That's what I like about this. This is also a great option um, if you're going to put this uh, somewhere where, let's say you want this uh, at a loading dock, okay? And you can have this just to plug it into a power supply in a loading dock and then have this the, the other handheld out in maybe the shop by the loading dock for your uh, employees to communicate with drivers and stuff like that. So I just see a lot of options, but I figured I'd bring this up. This is how I had it temporarily plugged in the Subaru, uh, just so I didn't have to hardwire it for the video. It will be hardwired in the future. So I'll put a link to this, uh, the on-glass mount antenna, the radio, everything will be underneath the description. It is affiliate links. It does not affect the price of the items. It's the same as if you go to Amazon regularly, but if you do use the links, it helps out the channel. And I really do appreciate it. So, uh, yeah. That's about it, and now over to the giveaway. We are giving one away, brand new in the box. This has a manufacturer suggested retail price of $200. Uh, I think you can get it a little cheaper on Amazon. There'll be a link underneath the video for that. So, I'm giving this away. All you have to do is like and subscribe if you are not already a subscriber. Like the video. Please share the video on all your social media platforms. It really does help spread the word about the channel. And make a comment down below. It doesn't have to be, you know, about this particular radio, but you can, that's one option. You can say, hey, this is what I want to see in one of your future videos. Maybe give you a video, maybe give me a video idea, or tell me what you're going to do with this radio. Um, and... After about 30 days, roughly, <clears throat> we'll do a random uh, a random selection from the top 100 comments. So you have a 1 in 100 chance of winning this. So if you are one of the top 100 comments, uh, you'll be entered to win this. And I hope you win. Good luck. Hope you enjoy it. And let's get down to the final part, what I liked and what I didn't like. So, what I liked... We finally have a wireless solution. I have been waiting for this for a long, long time. Very, very cool. The features of this radio are awesome. I love the memory scan feature, so you can just scan a particular set of uh, channels or frequencies you want to. I love that it's got a really good SWR uh, TrueSense in it, which actually works rather well. I love the DSP. It actually functions and works. <clears throat> Everything about this, for the most part, I like. I really love the versatility. I love the fact that you can use a cigarette lighter jack or USB powered off a laptop, powered off a USB um, port. The fact that it's Bluetooth, the audio quality is good. The speaker in this is really, really good and really loud. That's something I was worried about. Sometimes these all-in-one kind of gadgets have a really small speaker and they don't sound good. 
This sounds fantastic. Hmm. I like that it's waterproof because I was thinking right away, well, people are going to be using this in off-road. I like that it has the built-in um, weather channels. Everything I really, really do like overall. What I don't like, um, I wish it was a little thinner, not wider. I like the the width is fine. It feels really good in hand. It's 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 heavy. Um, I wish it was a little thinner. I know I'm nitpicking. Um, what else? Uh, I wish it had a PA. Uh, I know in a lot of states PAs are not allowed, but I've heard down from uh, a secret uh, little bird that. The next model might have, the next uh, version of this model might have a PA built in. So we'll see if that happens. Um, I, of course, wish it had sideband. I wish it was an all-mode radio. Uh, I, I think it would be fantastic uh, to see a manufacturer like Cobra come out with a radio like this that's all-mode, you know, that does AM, FM, sideband. Also, uh, that maybe supports 10 meter. Because uh, 10 meter has been opened up uh, a lot lately, and it's only going to get stronger and stronger. So I do see a demand for that. Perhaps they don't. We'll see what happens. But a 148 version of this would be awesome. <laughs> Something similar to that. Or maybe a remote mount modern 148. Maybe they'll make a 149 with a remote head that you can actually mount in a modern car. Because even if they came out with a 149 <laughs> or 148 2.0, <clears throat> you couldn't mount it in a car. There's nowhere to mount the thing. So uh, if they do come out with an all-mode radio, which I hope they do, hopefully it has a remote head. That's going to be a big, big deal. Or maybe it'll even have Bluetooth, which would be cool. So those are the minor caveats um, I had. Um, I, one other thing. I'll put a couple little photos up here. So the little adapter that they give with this radio for um, going to the cigarette lighter socket, it has no indicator on it telling you whether you're plugged into <coughs> power or not. So you look at theirs, there's no light on it. It doesn't light up or anything. A lot of these kind of adapters I have, um, so I'll just use another one I have. Uh, it's one up here has a little, I don't know if you can see that or not, but there's a little LED right there. And it turns bright blue when it sees power. Um, I did have a couple occasions when I was using this and unplugging it where it wasn't quite plugged in and I couldn't get the head unit to come on and I wasn't quite sure what was going on and I looked down and I thought I had it seated well. Like I said, I'll put a couple pictures up. So that's a little thing maybe Cobra could do is add an LED to this so it lights up to let you know you do have power or maybe uh, have some type of an indicator on the plug itself you know like i said uh, maybe somewhere on here maybe a little little led uh this little red led or something built into the plug so you know this is getting power from your usb device i i did have some problems with my jump starter uh it it didn't want to turn on at first and i, I think the jump starter was almost dead as you heard in the video um so i, I didn't know if i was getting power to this or it wasn't and unfortunately the jump starter really didn't tell me whether the USB had a power so if this had a light I would know right away oh I am getting power so that would be a nice feature like I said I'm nitpicking big time perhaps maybe on here uh, you know there'd be power but like I said what if the unit's not functioning right as far as um, everything else I'm really happy with it so there's just a couple little tiny nitpicky things but this will be going in my car. Make sure you like and subscribe and, sh and share this video and help spread the word about the channel. And maybe you'll win one of these babies and we'll put a picture of you in the next video. I'm going to throw up right now a picture of Angelo in his radio. I actually just got this picture. Um, he emailed it to me and said, thank you very much for the radio. I think he's going to be putting it in, in a new truck he has. And congratulations, Angelo. Here's a picture of Angelo. All right, see you everybody in the next video.